Hi everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the video series where we give our patron members critique and feedback on how they and you can improve your miniature painting. We have some fantastic submissions this week, so let's jump straight in and have a look. Okay, our first submission is from Saddam, who has painted some Crimson Fists Stern Guard veterans, and he says, I've finished my first half of my Crimson Fist squad. I'm always eager to improve, and I'm trying to emulate the heavy metal style. So areas where I can push a little further would be very much appreciated. And he points out one of his own weaknesses he thinks is the cloaks. So one of the first things uh, that I, I can notice on here is the cloth, and Saddam's pointed that out just right from the get-go. The brightness on cloth is depending on the angle of the cloth to light, not whether it's deep or high or low or whatever the case may be. So to, as an example here on this tabard, um, the, obviously it's painted red. You can see not only has this obviously been edge highlighted, but also the natural light that's being put on the models is catching this area here, this top of this funnel here, as you can see. Um, also, if you look in this recess here, it's been painted dark, but you've also got natural lighting from just light refracting on the surface. You can see there's a brighter point in the center there. Now, that's not been painted brighter. That's where light is actually catching. What this essentially means is that this flat here within this recess should be as bright as the flat of the top of this funnel. And where shadow should be placed is actually in the middle of the two to show that the angle of the material is angled away from light, if you follow me. So if it's flat to light, it is bright. If it is angled away from, it is shadowed. So it should go bright here, shadow, bright, shadow, bright. And then that will mean that light is refracting on the surface in a correct way. And that's why cloth sometimes can be quite difficult to paint. It's just understanding how it interacts with light and where you should place the shadows. I think on the back of that as well, I think these are looking a little bit desaturated and pale, maybe just from the color choice of the highlights that have been used. And I think as well as that, the coverage is sort of a bit mixed. So we've yeah. got like a full bright edge highlight all the way down along here and then we've got an edge here that is is just as sharp and just as angular but we're sort of missing some of that brightness and saturation here in the middle and on the upper edge as well and you can see the same for these folds so they're a little bit inconsistent in how they're highlighted correct so yes. we've got a really sharp harsh fold here that you can see is catching a lot of light from the lamp yeah so we can tell that there should be light there but there's not actually a physically painted highlight on that no, exactly. and the same for here as well but we've got presumably behind this tuft it looks like they've been painted very 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 bright here and saturated here so maybe just consider bringing those highlights all the way up because this is in like you said a recess you're you're kind of naturally thinking i get the mindset of okay well that's a recess area that's in shadow but as you pointed out because you've got the the light source coming from above just from the way that this sits on this miniature this would actually be a highlight to me yeah and i would have followed that red all the way up and then yeah. i maybe consider just color choice as well it's a little bit sort of pastely kind of veering on the edge of pink perhaps i would have gone maybe with like a brighter orange for the highlight something like that yeah i would agree uh, okay so the second thing that we uh, both discussed was i think the way that the armor has been, pain been painted here is with just sort of an all over wash and my sort of giveaway for that is one the leg panel down here uh there's some pooling that i can see here and also on the side of the helmet i would say that if you're going for the the box art heavy metal style as you pointed out that you are i would maybe consider doing a proper panel line recess line shade in all of the recesses just to get you close to that box art look. I think that things like sort of staining and pooling here, you can kind of get away with on this dark blue because it almost looks like it's a glaze. Mm. But I think if you started applying that to other colors, you'd start to notice a bit more of a sort of dirty finish and you maybe can't quite get away with it so much. No, definitely. And, and also the other thing is with, like with, with the box art style, you want to be applying shadow incrementally, like doing a soft shadow and a deep shadow in the recesses and strategically placing it rather than an all over wash, which is way less controlled. Um, again, I think one of the magic things when it comes to box art style is about refinement and being as, as sharp and as neat and as smooth. And all over wash just won't give you that refinement or that, that level of control. Um, I think on the positives to point out, I think your edge highlighting is actually like really nice and neat and sharp. You can see that especially on like areas like the arms, the shoulder panels, the backpacks, and down here on the leg plates. So I think that if you keep on painting in this style for repetition and gaining that brush control, I think that that will definitely get like even sharper over time as well. And you can maybe start implementing some like third or fourth stage edge highlights. I can see that you've done some like occasional dots and little sharp points here, but I think just applying that everywhere would be great. Yeah. So like, uh, for example, I would have put some brighter highlights on the bottom of this shin plate here, maybe the underside of the knee plate and so on. I can see that you've done it here on the arm, for example, but as we always talk about the focal point for a miniature, I typically want to be the head, the helmet, the face. And I think this uh, helm, all of these helmets really could have benefited from some brighter highlights 
in those areas just to draw the eye to it some more. Yeah, no, definitely. I agree. I just want to touch on it as well. Like, I, I do think your brush control is is from the edging that's demonstrated on the miniatures is really good. Like one of the classic and easy points to see where how good your brush control is, is actually in the center of the elbow armor plate. Um, one of the things that I always go on about is uh, when you look at the, this center, center line here, you can't typically side of the brush edge highlight that. That has to be done with a tip. The fact that you've got a really sharp controlled line pulled in the correct linear fashion as the armor plate just shows that you've got that control. Repetition being the mother of success, keep doing that and you will get really crisp, consistent highlights everywhere. Okay, well, overall, I think that you're getting really, really close to the box art look and finish. It's already got that like box art vibe. Definitely, for sure. 100%. I think you're definitely with a little bit more practice, repetition and working on maybe some more color schemes and things like that. I think you definitely get really, really close. Yeah, they're brilliant. Really, really well done. Our next submission is from Paul Nickel, who has painted a Duchess miniature and what looks like a 75 mil scale model, which I think is new for Critique Clinic. Definitely, yeah. Um, and that that is evident from the uh, the use of Blitz for scale in the uh, <laughs> in the background. Uh, so, so yeah, um, really, really lovely miniature. Um, I, I, I think the color choices are great. That, em that rich emerald is, is really nice. Um, I think the material is painted really well. The light, the light source and direction of light source and the, the shading that's been applied on the cloth is correct to light source, which I think is great. Um, the only feedback that I would potentially give uh, on the material, uh, this, she's obviously a vampire, very, very elegant. Um, you'd expect the material or the cloth to be something of like a high quality. So I'd think, think maybe some suede or something like that or something like some velvet or something. Um, I think that the highlight stages, they're quite quite blocky and quite like striped and i think what i would definitely advocate is that you use more glazes to soften those down and you can do progressive stages of highlighting up to a, a similar vibrancy and saturation on the apex of the curve of the folds but um i think you just to emulate the material being velvet or being a lot softer i think creating a much smoother transition on that material will just help sell that material for what it is and that that better quality grade fabric. Um, you know, she's uh, she's not a Primark shopper. She's definitely definitely, <laughs> definitely shopping somewhere else. But um, but yeah, she's yeah, really. That's what I would probably recommend on the material. I think the initial thing that sort of strikes out to me is just sort of attention and where it's been spent. So, for example, I can tell that you've spent a lot of time and attention on that emerald cloth, but I can tell that maybe you've scrimped elsewhere. And I'm talking about things like, for example, the basing. This to me looks like it's just sort of an all over wash, which I can tell. Uh, in particular from how there's sort of a glossiness in yeah. the recesses, which is typical of wash balling. And then also I think as well, the the black in terms of just the amount of time spent on it, I think is kind of visually evident compared to the, like I said, the emerald cloth, for example, and especially the face. The face is painted fantastically well. It's very, very nice and smooth. I think that just a little bit more refinement and just a little bit more time spent, because I think it's clear that you've got the, the brush control and the brush skill. So it's not even necessarily... Uh, that you need to practice that is that I think you should be applying this level of finesse and detail and attention everywhere on the miniature, especially for a display piece like this. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, uh, talking about colors as well, I mean, George already pointed out the face is painted really nicely, like the subtle lighting effect, uh, the, the, the purplish hue as well to sell that kind of undead vibe is also great. Um, one of the things that I probably would would recommend is that you you know because the because the emerald is so rich and so vibrant in its in its color, what I'd probably do is maybe in some of the deeper parts just really push that 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 tone of purple a bit more. So then you'll have that lovely color contrast and color balance a bit more on there. Like the value of the the, the, the contrast value on there will be higher. Um, I know George, I think you're going to talk about it. The gold, but what I will just throw into it is is that the gold that's on there. Uh, I like the fact that it's got a bit of an orange hue to it because again, you've got that orange purple color contrast, which works really nicely. But, but what are your thoughts on the gold? Um, the, the gold isn't actually what jumps out to me as much as it is the silver. I think that again, just speaking in pure terms of attention, I think that the, the amount of high effort put into the highlighting and the shading of these is a little bit inconsistent to me. So the, the sword, I think it's a bit hard to tell from the photos, actually, if I'm being entirely honest, but I think the sword potentially could have gone a lot brighter and perhaps a lot more. Uh, attention spent in the highlight stages of that sword just to make it like really nice and gleaming and catching the light because i think it's a focal point of the miniature yeah, yeah to me at least from the photos it reads that the brightest silver is actually on the waist which yeah. to me like isn't actually a focal point that i'm trying to draw attention to um i'd be trying to draw it elsewhere definitely and then in addition to that i think that some of the shading could have just been done i think this has been done with a wash but i think just some uh, simple black lining just for some additional contrast could have really benefited this as well just to separate the detailing because it is quite a sort of busy detailed area yeah i i agree totally uh with regards to sort of the silver and the tax you want like it, things like the sword like george said you want the interest on that it's quite an elegant weapon you want to show that you know the the, the 
the, the beauty of that piece, you know, and that part of the miniature. And um, I think, yeah, the highlighting on there could be could be way higher. I think typically when uh, people are painting details where it's, for example, if you've got a miniature where it's got multiple things that you want to be gold, I think there's a tendency for people to use the exact same paints and paint recipe on all of those parts where the likelihood that, you know, the hilt of this sword and the buttons on the dress and the detailing here on the waist would all be the exact same gold would be quite unlikely to me, yeah. especially with the silver. If you think the blade would be like, you know, really high-end quality blade, I'm imagining like a very, very bright, like almost white gleaming blade. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, some smaller buckles and things like on, on, and bits. on the dress, I wouldn't expect to be painted in the exact same way with the exact same colors and tones. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, by using different paints, like you said, with the gold, you can tell different, you can tell different stories for those individual things on the miniature. Like a uh, thing for me that jumps out is like, for example, the ring that she's got on the, on the offhand, like you've got the ring that's on there. You've painted red for the, like the ruby or the gem that's in there. Um, that that's another little tiny little detail but you can make such an interesting focal point by adding adding different colors to it and uh, you've done with a red for the actual stone I'd, I'd paint that like an actual gem as well because it's it just looks like it's locked in red currently. i think there could have been an opportunity to do that potentially on the, the sort headdress. of headdress headdress sort of thing that's up here on the forehead as well i think it possibly looks it's quite hard to tell from the photo but i think it possibly looks like there is a gem that has been painted in there yeah i think so but in terms of just drawing the eye and contrast you know this one on the rings a lot lot brighter yeah again the face is the focal point i'd be want to divert that attention over here yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, something that I think you could be quite clever with as well is obviously she's she's a vampire. I potentially to add in again, you've got the green there, you've got you've got the purple obviously, which is the harmonious color of the contrast, which is red. I potentially would just do like maybe a, s a subtle bit of blood dripping from the mouth or something on the side, as if she's like wiped her mouth with a hand or something. Like you could do, you could add the bit of red on just on the lip here to add a tiny bit of red interest. That would be the direct color complement to the emerald of the of the on the, of the dress and the sort of like. Uh, I don't know what the scarf thing that she's got. Um, again, little things like that would just add that narrative and, and clever use of color to just work with color theory as well could work out nicely. Yeah, completely agree. But overall, like a very striking display piece. I think there's some great brush work on here. I think yep. it's just putting in a little bit more time on the other details of the miniature uh, to the same level as you have elsewhere. And I think overall, this is a brilliant display piece. Yeah, brilliant. I, I've got to say one last thing. I do love the white fleck of hair in the, in the hair. It's very, <laughs> very um, Cruella de Vil-esque. Vil yeah. Vil yeah, it's great. <laughs> Last up, we have a Raven Guard Terminator captain painted by Angry Raven, who says, uh, this was my last Raven Guard mini I finished. I saw steady progress with each mini from the Leviathan box. But I would like your feedback on what techniques I could work on to take this to the next level. I, I think one of the things for me that, that, that jumps out, or not so much in this case, is is the base. I think I always say it's a base is a, is a, is a frame for miniature. I think Raven Guard obviously having a, a dark armor color, I think being clever with color usage and just making the base contrast the actual physical miniature it'll make the model look darker and add more interest to the base i can understand totally why you painted the stone gray but i think that the the fallen screamer killer head on the on the base kind of gets a little bit lost um i would definitely and the, one of the beautiful things of painting black armor is that you can use pretty much any color that you want to contrast it so again i would pick either one of the preordained Hive Fleets, Leviathan, Kraken, or any of those ones that you that you know, or even make up your own one. Um, and I would actually paint that Screamer Killer head in uh, in in actual a really vibrant color, just so it adds specific interest to that bit of detail on the base, and also contrast the model a bit better. That's personally the thing that for me when I first saw the model, that's the thing that jumped out. I think as well, if you was going to paint this Screamer Killer head in that dark grey color scheme, I think because you've used the exact same colors to highlight that chitin on the Tyranid. And again, on the stone, I think that's why it's kind of getting lost a little bit. Yeah. I think that the miniature doesn't necessarily stand out on the miniature in terms of like colors and tones. I think if you sort of do that trick of like sort of looking out from a distance, kind of blowing your eyes a little bit, I think it kind of all melds together a little bit too much. I think you could have kept the same colors, but I think it's just being a bit more savvy with the the choice of highlight colors. Yeah, maybe maybe high, if you do want the, the the sort of like the tyranny to be like a black sort of color, maybe do the highlighting the kite and do it with like blue or do it with like uh you know like maybe it's all more bluish or purplish hues i think that potentially could could just add a bit of interest to, the, to that specific bit yeah um next up i think again i've spoken about it and pretty much every single miniature with this the face typically being the focal point i can tell just from the way that you've highlighted like the the smile lines and the cheek and the brow and all the details on this face you've definitely got the brush control to paint a nicely painted face mm -hmm. i think that what this is suffering from, I think for me, is perhaps a little bit of time that wasn't spent focusing on this. I think it looks to me like you've potentially just done sort of a base coat wash layer highlight, which is perfectly valid if that's the way you want to approach it. But I think just a little bit more time spent in the refinement of doing that. So for example, 
you've gone to the effort of highlighting, you know, the brow, the nose and everything, but the forehead has been completely left, yeah. which is, you know, one of the main parts that would be catching a lot of light. And I think it makes the forehead look kind of a bit strangely dark than it the rest of the face. It looks way more recessed than the rest of it. And re in reality, it's not. It's one of the flattest parts of the head that catches light the most. So. Yeah, and it would actually be it's, it's the most forward sort of facing part of it, but it actually looks like it's further away because it's darker. Yeah, definitely. So I think just spending a little bit more time on layering up things like that. And I think as well as that, you could go, I can see that you've got the brush control from the things you've, you've painted the teeth and the pupils of the eyes and things like that. I think that you know, adding some additional uh, color jumps in highlights, so adding like a third or fourth, uh, highlight color just for some additional contrast so just picking out some smaller details so you've highlighted the whole cheek the whole uh sort of upper jawbone area then adding you know just some smaller parts so doing a very very small highlight here on the brow in a brighter color doing a very very small highlight here on the tip of the nose the top of the cheeks and that sort of thing i think would add a lot of contrast to the face and then as well as that i think that the color choice of the purity seals for me personally is a bit too similar to the skin tone. Yeah, I was And I think say. that you could approach that in two different ways. You could either go for a, a different color entirely or go for a paler parchment or alternatively go for a warmer skin tone on the face. Yeah, well, it looks, I mean, I'm obviously just trying to read the miniature looking at it. It, re it looks like the, the same wash has been applied to both the parchment as the face. And I think time efficiency why is that makes sense but i think when you're trying to paint stuff and, and emulate it as different materials be it flesh or be it parchment i think you do need to take into consideration what color you're going to be toning it with to make it read like that thing um i think that with for purity seals and stuff like that like you need to look at parchment and like google image search like old manuscripts or parchment or like you know old medieval tapestries or things like that you need to search that and have a look at the, the way that they actually are and the way that they're stained and the way that they look you don't because it's like paper you don't necessarily have like super dark recesses like you've got on on there it tends to be a lot softer um and it's I, quite drastic sort of jumps in shading as well yeah. like if you look at the difference between like i mean you can see it here especially if you look at the difference between this shade and this highlight yeah it's a very very big color jump i'll be looking to do you know there are some pretty deep recesses and crinkles in this paper but i think the it the wouldn't tense, be that dark it wouldn't be as dark as yeah. that for me personally and i think as well because just in terms of like physical surface area there is more parchment than there is skin. Mm. I think that's also what's not helping with the balance issue there in terms of color tones. So I'd have potentially gone, for it, the, the problem as well is if you went way, way, way more bleached with that parchment, it's still gonna be very, very skin, similar to the skin tone. So I would consider perhaps doing like, you know, a stained parchment in like red, cause that's your nice accent color. Or like I said before, adding some different like warmer skin tones, I think would uh, would really help. Well, I, I was going to throw in. I mean, you've used red as an accent color on it, which I think is really good. And I think it actually adds a lot of interest to to like a Raven Guard scheme, be it obviously the dark sort of black armored scheme. Um, much like Black Templars, if you look at the way that they have their parchments, they tend to have them as red. Yep. Um, and then do white script on there, which I think works quite nicely. You've already got the red accent on there, so you could even do them as like a, a dark, a darker red kind of toned parchment, and then do the script in white, which I think would look quite good. Um, it'll just add a bit more interest to the model. It's in a nice triangular shape, those three areas as well. So it kind of focuses the eye into the center of the model, which is good. Um, so yeah, I definitely think you need to do that. And then uh, just a final point out here is a bit of a bit of a deadly sin in our book is the the lack of drilling the barrel holes here. Yeah, just such a small thing that takes such a little amount of time, but adds a massive amount of visual interest and value to the miniature i think yeah definitely yeah he wouldn't go into battle with a tonka toy so uh <laughs> so you know he wants a real working gun I, I i just noticed from zooming in there actually it's something i do want to throw in like you, if you look at the toe armor for example you've got you you've put really lovely refined catch lights on the two highest points of yeah the highlighting armor. overall in the armor is actually very very nice and sharp and it's very yeah. very clean overall yeah i mean and you like we were talking just obviously segueing back into the sort of purity tools really quickly like you've definitely got the brush control to do that text so it's something that is a shame that it's not been done on there and like if you look at the scroll just on the on the shin plate where the crux terminatus is like you've definitely got the control and ability to do it so these little things that time investment to do it will add so much visually to the model as well yeah just some going much 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 brighter with and paler with with the parchment and then going in with just some black uh, black paint and just doing some tiny little squiggles and add some text and things it makes it read as well like more like what it's supposed to be and what it is yeah um it's it's immediately obvious when you look at it then that oh that's you know a manuscript that's a parchment yeah i mean he might he might have sided with emperor's children or night lords he might be they might be flesh you never know yep, so fair. um so yeah but um and, and we haven't spoken about it but just to throw it in there the sword looks really nice as well i like i like the sort of like nice lava effect yeah and effect on it as well i think you've done really well with that um but yeah overall great great model yeah fantastic work
a massive thank you to all of our patrons for submitting for this week's episode of Critique Clinic. If you would like your miniatures featured on a future episode for critique and feedback, then check the link in the description of this video. And there'll be a link to our Patreon where you can become a member. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you very soon on the next episode.